Hi everybody, it's Andrea, oops sorry, and I'm here to do my reading wrap up, finally. I'm very busy over here, I'll explain more in a colour and chat, excuse the rubbish behind me. It's Jennifer's cuddly doys, among other things. Anyway, reading wrap up, what I read in March. So the first book I read was Expecting to Die by Lisa Gardner, which I gave four stars. This tells the story of Detective Reagan Pascoli. Pascoli. She's about to go on maternity leave. Um, her old uh, 15, 16 year old daughter or something like that is swept up in a murder case. So what happens is the teenagers uh, sneak out and go to a party in the woods and play a stupid game and her daughter Bianca trips over a body of one of their school, school um, friends and then another body is found and another and they start mounting up and Priscoli races to try and find out who killed these people before she has to go on maternity leave. Uh, it was really good, I like uh, Lisa Jackson's books, I really enjoyed this one, four stars. Then I read uh, Blood Harvest by SJ Bolton. This was a good one as well. Gillian's uh, haunted by a little girl who disappeared two years ago, but she is convinced that her daughter survived. Tom lives by a neglective churchyard with his family, um, and they keep seeing a strange child playing there. There's a new vicar in town, he's one of the main characters, and he, along with, um, I think she's a, a social worker, or a psychologist, is trying to get to the bottom of what happened. She's seeing the kids from the, that live in the house in the churchyard. And, and basically what happens is there's a storm and the retaining wall of the churchyard falls down and a grave is uncovered but instead of one body there are three bodies and so it turns into this major murder mystery uh, thing. Uh, I gave that one five stars because I thought this was absolutely brilliant. And then after that one I read, where is it? Sorry they're not, I'd normally put them in some sort of order and I kind of haven't. The Whistling by uh, uh, Rebecca Nutley. This one was a bit weird. Um, Elspeth is, is Victorian Gothic horror basically. Elspeth arrives on a remote island to come down to a child um, whose twin brother had died in a accident. His ghost along with the ghost of their former nanny is haunting the house because <sighs> because um, the town believed that the nanny was a witch and she had got the boy to become a witch and yeah so why did it, you know the nanny disappeared but she's actually dead um and why and what happened to William so she starts investigating and finds out that everything is not as it seems the nanny didn't leave she died uh, William wasn't it wasn't really an accident and there, there's somebody else behind this nastiness on the poor island and yeah it is really really good we gave that one four stars it's been a very good four star month Dorothy and the Wizard in Oz which is obviously from this book this is the book four in the Oz series by L Frank Baum in which Dorothy um is coming back to Kansas and she's being picked up at the train by a young lad and a horse and cart. She gets on the horse, they're travelling back to the Kansas farm when there's a big storm and an earthquake and the world opens up and they plummet into the hole to end up in another country. Not Oz. Um, this is the country of the Mang Mangabos who are like creatures made of vegetables. They're not very nice. And eventually they escape the Mangabos and end up in Oz with Ozma and the wizard arrives um, on one of their, I think he arrives at the Mangabos as well, yes he does, and they're all reunited and then they go off to Oz and I really enjoyed that one. I am really enjoying the series, again four stars, yay! I don't know where my phone is, um, but it's here somewhere, just a sec. Oh, 
Okay, the first book I finished on my Kindle in March, and this, I've not read much on my Kindle, but I did finish a few, was The Quantum Creators and The Fabergé Egg. I can't remember how to put the picture up here. It doesn't seem to be working. I will try again at some point, um, which was a really good book. This tells the story of two Earths. There's Alpha Earth and Beta Earth. We live on Beta Earth. Beta Earth isn't as advanced technologically or socially as Alpha Earth, and there are these people who step from alpha to beta to re uh, to to rescue certain things that are going to be destroyed in on beta s then there is a discovery of a Fabergé eggs which is going to be broken so that they can come and take it safely because uh, it doesn't have a future in on our world and it's um how they track down the egg how they work with contemporary earth people from our planet. I really enjoyed it. It, it. You know, similar to just the, the, the Chronicles of St Mary's, but not a hundred percent. I've lost my notebook again. I'm not doing very well, am I, today? I do apologise. I did give it a uh, bit of four stars again because it's amazing. It was really, really good. It is a series. I think there's a, another four books and I have got them to read, so I'm hoping to read um, another one of those very soon. Then I read Graham Greene's Travels with My Aunt, uh, which tells the story of Henry Pullen. He is a retired bank manager um, whose parents are deceased and he meets his aunt Augusta for the first time in 70 years, well, since, well, 50 years. The last time she met him or he met her was at his christening and there was a bit of falling out within the family. She fell out with his mother, her sister. Um, but does attend his mother's funeral and then she persuades Henry to abandon his house and his dahlias and ooh, to travel around the place with her from Brighton, Paris, Istanbul, Paraguay um, it's a, he has a bit of an adventure with uh, hippies, war criminals, the CIA, smokes pot, breaks all the currency regulations and basically has a life for the first time in his life and finds out that his mother wasn't actually his mother. Now I actually really enjoyed this one. I gave it another four stars. I thought when I picked this book up I thought I'll try it. I've heard of it. I have no idea what it's about. I'm probably not going to enjoy it but as soon as I started reading it I did not want to put it down. I really enjoyed the way it was written so I will be keeping this one even though it's not the best copy and I will be looking out for more Graham Green. Then we have A Flash of Blue. This is a YA book, it's a young adult book by Maria Farah. This tells the story of a girl named Amber who messes up. Basically, she steals her brother's necklace. It's a, a stone he found on a beach with a hole in it and he, he wore it around his neck. And that day, he, the day she steals it, she, she's gonna give it back to him, but she doesn't get a chance to because he dies of a heart condition that they didn't know he had. One year later, and his family has still not come to terms with his death, they've not processed it properly. His mother got rid of all his stuff. Um, they don't pay attention to her. They're trying to pull Amber into being as good as him at running, which she does enjoy, but she's not up to him. Every time she doesn't win a race, her father's really disappointed in her. So she's sort of like trying to live up to the golden child almost, even though she loved her brother and they were really close. Um, and then later on she falls um, in with his, what was his best friend, Tyler. But unfortunately Tyler is mixed up with some very, very bad people and they go and get into trouble. She is arrested for burglary, even though she wasn't a didn't actually break into the house herself, they did. She was like the lookout, so she's arrested, but because she's so young, they're not going to press charges, but they do want her to meet the owner. When she meets the owner of the house, she finds it's a doctor and his family, his wife and their son. And his son has a heart condition and needs a heart transplant. He is dying. Um, so she goes to meet the boy and after explaining 
everything and apologising and she goes to meet him and decides that she wants to make amends but she wants to make amends in a more productive way than just apologising and helping out. So she starts running a campaign for organ donation which is wonderful um, and Tyler turns himself in as being a part of the gang that did the burglary and he also gets beaten up because he snitches on the others but it is a really lovely story a really lovely story again it was a four star read for me <coughs> there's lots of four star reads this week excuse me i'll just take a quick sip i did enjoy that one then um this is definitely a permanent collection edition Halloween Party by Agatha Christie. This is a Poirot novel featuring his friend, the writer Ariadne Oliver, who writes mysteries. She is staying in a village where they're having a Halloween party for the children. And at this Halloween party, one of the children said she saw a murder. And then later this girl turns up dead. Now this is described as one of the most horrific of Agatha Christie's books because it deals with child murders. This was 69 so it wasn't long after the Moors murders and so on. Um, so basically it's, it's about who killed this girl and why. And it is a really really sad story that they killed this girl because she's not actually the one that saw the murder it's somebody else. Lots of twists and turns and I really enjoyed this Agatha Christie and this look at this beautiful gold foiling on the cover isn't it gorgeous it's a lovely hardback it's got the lovely end papers so yeah so that was that one again four stars I really enjoyed it can't fault it she was next <laughs> uh, oh uh -huh. <laughs> The Vinyl Detective. Andrew Cartmore put out a new book this year. He's got another one coming out later in the year as well, but that's from a different series, which I will be starting to read soon. Um, and the book was called Noise Floor. And this is about, obviously it's our friend, the Vinyl Detective. He is hired by three women who all live with one man. They have that sort of, they're all his wives. He's gone missing. His name is Lambert Rankin. He's also known as Imperium Dart and was a techno um, dance wizard back in the 90s but he tends to wander off when he feels like it but he's been gone a long time and they're worried so final detective starts looking for him there are lots of pranks along the way some of them aren't very serious and some of them are and nearly gets them killed because somebody else is also trying to get to Lambert. Um, yes, it was a really, really, really good book. I love these stories. It was a five star for me. This is book seven in the series. If you haven't read any of The Final Detective, go pick up the first one, which was called Written in Dead Wax, um, and see what you think. They, they, they're funny, uh, they're heartwarming, and there's lots of records in it. Which is always good in my opinion. Ah, right. I need my phone. Time is it? Oh, it's only just two. that Henry is JFK's son. And I am so confused. Anyway. In order to get Marilyn's diary, or to see Marilyn's diary, they have to go and, I'm trying to think what it's called, solve the murder of the Mafia's son who was killed a year previously in a barn he was planning to buy, potentially to run drugs or something from it so that's what they do and they go and they solve it and they see the diary and it's nothing revelatory at all because we know it's a load of rubbish two stars hang on we've got another ebook 
Okay, this was a good one as well. I enjoyed this. This is the first in a series, and the series is called Candle Maker. It's by W.L. Knightley, and it's called The Haunted Counter. Now, this tells the story, or the start of the story, of a girl named Kinsey Ellerman who moves to a new town where her friends live because she's had a really bad breakup. She moves into a scary old house which she is renting. The garage and its apartment above is being rented by somebody else who's a chap that she meets who does woodwork and builds furniture basically uh, but he is getting arthritis in his hands badly so he is starting to struggle her friend thinks the house is really creepy and haunted because she's into all that and they go to an antiques fair where she buys a little kitchen counter like the ones that you have when you're a kid and her friend's gone on about it being haunted and blah blah blah, blah. and the bloke says well no actually uh, my dad made this I played with it it was my sister's as well trust me it's not haunted so they take it back and she puts it wherever she puts it and she's furnishing the house slowly and there are weird things happen and she sees a girl in the house um, her friend's convinced it's haunted so they go and get a psychic in who is a bit of a you know scam artist not that I'm saying all psychics are because I don't believe they are um who says yes yes it's haunted blah 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 and so on but it's actually not the girl is the daughter of somebody else that we meet in the in the thing and I'm not going to go into too much of it but what is actually happening the main point of this story is it book one in a series is that there is a serial killer on the loose in this town who is targeting girls who look exactly like Kinsey Elliman. She says she's not scared, she doesn't care, she's not going to change her hair like a lot of girls are. Um, and at the moment, it's not affecting her. But obviously at some point, it's going to. I haven't got any of the newer books at the moment because you have to pay for them. I will when I need to read something because I've got so much to read. My TBR is at 402 books. I'm climbing. So, yes, I did give that. Hang on, let me have a look. The Haunted Counter, four stars. Got two more to go. One more ebook in a bit. But first, I'm going to have to sort this out properly next time, aren't I? Because it's a right mess. Spy by Danielle Seal. This was a TBR jar pick. Basic tells the story of Alex, who is an aristocratic daughter of this rich, fat, richish family who lives out in Hampshire. Her two brothers sign up to join the RAF and go off to war. It's 1939. She decides that she is going to go and work for the yeomanry in London, driving ambulances and trucks and helping people because she wants to, to help. However, Alex has a talent for languages and, and is proficient and fluent in French and German and is also very good at Italian, making her ideal for a special department in the war office called the SOE. So they are special ops. So they recruit her as a spy to go between, between blah, 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 behind enemy lines and get information from resistance fighters from Germans and so on basically put her life on the line for the country which she does and she does a brilliant job she's really good at it um her two brothers are killed in the war uh, sadly so she is now heir to this place and she meets a guy named Richard who's also in the RAF he luckily survives and they get married after the war and have a child um, in fact, they have two, but the first one sadly dies because he joins the forest office and he is sent out to India where the child becomes sick and passes away. They do have another child who survives and it tells the story then of them carrying on their lives as he moves from country to country in the foreign office every four years and she is a spy for MI6. And it just turns out not as serious as it was in the war. It's basically just reporting back on people until they move to Moscow, which obviously is a lot more dangerous because they move there at the height of the Cold War. And then it tells the story of what her kids decide to do. And uh, when they grow up... Um, so her daughter decides to stay in America, marries an American, has three children of her own. And it's what they decide to do. And one of them decides to become a spy like Alex which was really good I, I gave it four stars I really really enjoyed that and I have one more ebook to talk about so the last book I read is another ebook it's called 1980 a year in the life of Keith Diamond it's by Jason Ayres it's another one of these time traveling type books where somebody goes back and can change things to an, but this is to an extent then so Keith Diamond is a radio DJ on a 
national radio station he does the morning show he is very controversial he's got old-fashioned views that, you know mis misogynistic racist and all that stuff very controversial his radio station is taken over and he's called up to senior management where he is summarily dismissed now he is not employed um, by contract he's a freelancer which means he gets paid per show as opposed to a wage so that's it nothing and the reason one of the reasons he's fired is the person who is now in charge of his radio show radio station is a lady named Natalie who he met in 1980 when she was 15 on work experience and he was a fledgling reporter for a daily newspaper in Fleet Street. Now obviously back in 1980s it was a very misogynistic, very sexist workplace and she was treated very badly, he pinched her bum, they called her names, expected her to do this and she learnt nothing. And she says that he has not changed and to an extent he hasn't, he also has a little bit. So anyway, he shuffles off out to a pub to get a pint, sits down, has a drink, and a lady approaches him and sits down with him. And she is wearing a bracelet you can't see. And she says that you're going to be able to change your life because I am going to give you the, if you, she makes him feel the bracelet. And he says, you are going to have this and it is going to, you're going to wake up in 1980 because I have just I've come back from 1979 and I've been looking for you since and you will have one year in which to improve things you can't make major changes but there will be oops, sorry there will be certain things that it will let you do so for instance one of the things he can remember is the Grand National winner for that year but the bracelet will either go green or red, depending on if he's doing something good or bad, or something he's allowed or not allowed to do. So when he tries to put a bit higher bet on than he put on at the time, it won't let him. It tells him no. So he puts on his right the, the bet he put on last time, and then the belt and, and, and the bracelet's happy. So there are certain things. One of the things he knows he's going to do is he's going to meet Natalie that day, uh, that, that year. So he goes back and he, he's already changed in a way because he goes back and he's living with his mate who graduated at the same time and they go back to the grungy little flat and it's a mess and there's food cartons everywhere and it's disgusting and dirty and smell. and he doesn't like it he wants it changed he, he said we're gonna have to clear it up to his mate and his mate says well i thought we weren't gonna bother with that nonsense we were gonna just rock and roll you know and he says yeah but we could still live like human beings and things like that so to an extent he has changed and of course he's given up smoking by this point whereas in 1980 everybody smoked he takes a a, a, a drag of, of a marlboro red which is what he smoked originally and nearly coughs his gut up um again he does acclimatize to it slowly but again he gives it up there are he doesn't drink as much now he still likes to drink but doesn't get bladdered like he did because obviously when you're younger you do so he can remember everything he did and, and everything that went wrong and now he's going to try and make it right so I like this book it was four stars there's a lot of these 1980s um, tra time travel books there's another two com coming out one later this year so I'll be looking forward to trying to read that because I did enjoy it and this time I think it's a woman next time that goes back to 1981 and she gets like Princess Diana meeting Prince Charles and marrying Charles and things like that he got there, there were things he had to one of the things he had to do was uh, make sure Robin Cousins made it to uh, the Olympics, which obviously he did, <laughs> but in this new timeline where he's got back, Robin Cousins um, was injured by a taxi or by a car crossing the road and didn't make it. So this way it still happened. Anyway, those are all the books I read in March. <laughs> Considering I went from not wanting to do anything in February, understandably, to reading like that, I'm, I'm back on the reading train now um, and I've enjoyed it. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed my ramble and I will see you again in the next video very very soon. Bye!